This is James with First Updates Now. I am here with the South Florida Regional Champions Team 695 Bison Robotics. We're going to be going over their very unique and very, very efficient design. I have Ben, Jillian, and Vias here with me, and, as soon, and they're going to go over what led them to their regional victory. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. All right, we're going to start off with Ben. You're going to go over some of the system designs. Yeah. So when we were designing our robot early in the season, we wanted to keep it as simple as possible and see if we could limit actuations and number of moving parts on the robot just to just to play the game more efficiently and quickly and just limit the complexity on a robot because we are a very young team so it was important that we had every member of our team understand what we were doing and had put a, could play an active role in what we were doing so our elevator is mounted at a fixed angle three stages and we went through a vigorous CAD progress to um, to make to find our elevator angle to make sure we could play all three station all three heights and station at the same time. So we're Ben's gonna deploy it over here. So that's at the top. Comes down. Can go up to the middle height and the bottom height. So we put a lot of hours in CAD finding this angle so we could not so it didn't have to move and it could play cones and cubes at all three levels. And I can hand it over to Jillian to talk about the gripper. So um, halfway through the season, we had um, our elevator almost completely figured out, but we were like, we weren't sure what we were gonna do for like the carriage or the gripper. And we knew a reliable gripper that we've seen, like based on research, was that Everybot gripper. And um, we just kind of incorporated it with our design. And it's very similar shape. Um, I can show it in taking a cube or a cone. Very fast. Yep, almost flawless. Um, that's kind of how we decided on that. We decided that we wanted to use the EveryBot because we knew it was reliable and we knew that we could adapt it to our design and change a few simple things to play, be able to play the game very efficiently. And that was other critical design choice we made throughout the season was we added a 316 steel belly pan for ballast weight to make sure we weren't tippy. So the, the robot is very simple and well thought out, but it, we, we kept it bare bones and simple just so we could play the game fast and efficiently and it paid off well because... So yeah, I can hand it over to Vias to show a little bit of our control board. So the nice thing about our robot is that it's very streamlined and efficient. And one of our main uh, purposes of the way we approach this the way that we did is to try and ensure that the driver is a functioning uh, strategic controls versus thinking about um, the mechanics of the robot. So for example, if you notice, uh, we have two different modes, cone and cube mode, and these LEDs reflect that. That's a, in fact a separate subsystem. So the EveryBot intake um, requires a different way of intaking cubes and cones. Intaking a cone is the same as releasing a cube. So we don't want the driver to think about that. So if you notice over here, we can change cone and cube mode on this nice little Python user interface that we have. It communicates to, to the robot via network tables, and it allows the operator to choose the mode and the elevator. So notice that Ben here does not need to think about what level he's uh, going at on, his, on the controller. The operator can simply choose it, and he can go to that level and back. So if you want to go to the bottom level, he just presses X and presses it again for it to go back down. So that's one of the reasons we were able to increase our efficiency. By encapsulating this inside this interface, we were able to save a lot of time on the field. And in addition, we've uh, added stall control to uh, the intake. So if we try a cube, if you want to put a cube in there, you just press a button and it keeps running until it senses a stall and it just holds it in. That way we don't burn out a motor and we don't need to worry about the driver releasing it too early. And then you can simply release it. So that's one of the feedback features we have. We have trapezoidal control on our elevator at the different levels so that we can go there as smoothly as possible without dropping anything. 
And we also have dynamic control to look at the pitch so that we can uh, balance uh, very well during auto. So we've docked and engaged every time that we've cho chosen to run it. And we've split our autonomous into three different parts where we score at the beginning, and that's where this has come in handy. We can preset this before a match. The part where we move out, we have various paths for that. And finally, where we go in the charge station, we have a sendable chooser to choose whether or not we want to do that. So that's a little bit about the control systems on a robot. All right, it is a very, very effective design. You guys are already heading to Houston at week one. We look forward to seeing what else you're going to be able to pull off with the rest of the season and more practice. Thank you, Ben, Jillian, and Vias so much for the interview. And we look forward to the rest of your season. See you all right. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.